Hello student, my name is Noma N.P. Shalembe. I will be taking you for management communication and form. Uh, today we're going to do two modules. Those two modules are module 5 and module 6. Module 5 is based on the mass media and advertising. The second one, it is module six. Module six, it is the meeting procedure. I would like to share with you by the end of this lesson, these are the objective that you need to be able to know. You need to list and recognize the different main media. You need to be able to List the functions of a mass media. You need to be able to define the mass media as extension of the interpersonal communication process. Lastly, you'll need to explain the role played by mass media in the community. I will explain to you the mass media and advertising. The mass media is when a sender transmits a message to a very large number of receivers. The, receiver, the receivers give feedback which, in, which is indirect and it is delayed. So by Doing this, I will just give you a small graph so that you will remember what I'm talking about. Mass media process. I will start by a sender. It is message. The medium. And the receivers because we are doing what we're doing a mass media processing receivers receivers So it's a, it's a sender, it's sending a message, it's using a medium. Two, it's sending a message to what? To the receivers. The receivers give us feedback. They will give us feedback. Remember our feedback, it will be indirect and it is delayed. Feedback. Feedback, it's indirect and it is delayed. And it's going straight to what? It's going straight to the sender. This is the mass media processes that we have. So, my students, we are now going to do what? We are going to do categories of mass media. The categories of mass media, we've got six categories of mass media. The first one, it is the printed audio. The second one, it is uh, audio media. The third one, it is audio visual media. The fourth one, it is electronic 
Fifth one, it is public library. And then the sixth one, it is outdoor media. So to make your life easier, I will also give you the example of those categories of mass media. The printed media, it is your newspaper, your magazine, your pamphlet. Your audio media, it is um, radio, it can be your radio matters back, gakasi, and so on. And then if it, audio visual media, it can be your television or the cinema. Uh, electronic media, it can be in your internet. Public media, sorry, public library, it can be your journals or your books. Outside media, it can be your, po your posts and also your billboards. In the, in, the mass, in the mass media, we have the barriers. So I will mention to you the four barriers that we have in the mass media. We've got a psychological barrier, we've got a physical barrier, we've got a semantic barrier, and also we've got a stereotyping barrier. Those are the four barriers that we have in MS media. I'll start by tell, informing you the physical barrier. An example of a physical barrier, it can be a power cut. That is an example of a physical barrier. Psychological barrier. An example of psychological barrier, it is a violence. Um, stereotyping barrier. It can be your religion or your gender. Semantic barrier, it can be your accent or your difficult words. Those are the four barriers that we have in our mass media. The functions of mass media, they are very important. We've got the eight functions of mass media, which is to inform. It's on, to inform, it's informing us about the news about what's happening in the world, to interpret, to interpret opinion, that is an example, to educate, to educate, especially for example, nowadays, in this time, we got coronavirus. For example, that's why we're taking this opportunity to do educational programs for you students to be updated about your studies. Advertise. Advertising, we, ad, we see advertising everywhere. In most places, in the papers, in the magazine, they, we can advertise the product and also the service that can be advertised. Like your BNB, the specials, entertainment. Entertainment, we're talking about movies and sports. Nowadays, since of the corona, coronavirus, uh, we don't have spots. We, don't, we can't go to the cinemas. So we miss all of that th those things. We can't go to the gyms because we're trying to avoid what? We're trying to avoid to, be, to get coronavirus. Provide services. Providing services. It's a weather report. Each and every day, we all need one. We all need to know what to wear the following day. If you're going to school, if you're going to work, or if you are at home just to clean up your house, you need to know if it's sunny or it's cold. Promote cultures. Promote, cu promote cultures. When it's promoting cultures, we are different. We're coming from different backgrounds. For example, 
we, we, some of us, we, we celebrate Christmas. Some people are celebrating Diwali. So those are the culture. It's all depending on our different cultures. Moral watchdogs. The moral watchdogs, it, ex it exposes the corruption. Now, I'm going to explain to you about the manipulating reporting. What is a manipulating reporting? It is very important for you to understand what is a manipulating reporting. A manipulating reporting is when a media influence the person it's when a media influence a person's mind in a positive way or in a negative way. There are techniques that, can, that are in the manipulating report. Techniques. We've got different techniques in a manipulating report, but I won't mention all of them, but I'll, men I'll mention a few. It's a selection of facts. Uh, incorrect statistics, opinion, and quotes by people. For example, selection of facts. There is a coronavirus. As if there is a coronavirus, we hear facts, we hear different stories, not all the facts. We, hear the cor we have the incorrect statistics each and every day. Sometimes we are going to tell, we are going to be told with how many people died, how many people survived in this coronavirus. On the same day, we hear, we hear different numbers. And then propaganda. A propaganda, it is from manipulating the reporting. It is a desperate attempt by an individual or a group to influence people's mind. Now I'm going to give you the elements. We've got elements, three elements of propaganda. The first one, it is ethos. The second one, it is logos. logos. The fourth one, it is pythos. The media uses a famous person who looks trustworthy. The audience will believe what they say. For example, it can be the political leader that we can make as a, a person who, can, who, who is famous. The statistics, the, chart, the charts, the percentage, the information makes sense, but it is not true. For example, the statistics on the coronavirus. Pythos, emotional language is too opinion. The language is used make us scared and angry. For example, like banning of cigarette, banning of alcohol. Most people are not happy and are angry at this time of coronavirus. The techniques used by propagandists, it is uh, stereotyping, substituting on names, selection of facts, it is lying, it is reputation, it is pinpointing the enemy. Now we're going to do um, advertising. What is advertising? Advertising is when someone is paying, it's when you're paying someone to promote, it can be your ideas, it can, it can be your product or your services. The purpose of, of advertising, it is what? It is to inform, to persuade, and to remind. For example, when I'm saying it is to inform, we are informed about the certain products that is new in the market. 
they informing us about that product. And then to remind, for example, all of us, we've known Coca-Cola long time ago, but each and every time they keep on record, I mean, advertising it, they keep on advertising Coca-Cola, they reminding us which they is still available. That is when they reminding us. And then persuade. To persuade someone is to try to inform someone or to show someone about the product or a service. For example, like uh, a BNP, you having a specials for a BNP specials. And then these are the exercises. I will give you now an, another exercises, which are more important. And some of these questions, they might come out in your exam. So it is very important to know this exercising. Some of the, these questions, they appear in a exam papers. For example, you need to know, a defini define the following concept. Agenda, a propaganda. Number two, it is named for techniques used in manipulating reporting. Number three, discuss the three elements of propaganda. Number four, name three purpose of advertising. Number five, what does acronym ADA, ADA stand for? So it is very important for you to know that. Criticism against advertising. Advertising creates a false need. Sometimes we, you buy something not because you need it, but because you, you saw it on TV or on the newspaper. Advertising stresses materialism. Advertising poor taste. Advertising misleading. Advertising supports the stereotypes. Advertising uh, manipulates children. If the children are easily influenced by advertising. For example, if you're advertising certain products, that is worn by kune, intubeleng kune. I don't know if I said right. Intubeleng kune. Children, especially the boys, they will love that product. They will ask you to buy the, that product. Advertising appeals the emotion rather than the reasoning. The requirements for persuading advertising. There are four. You need to know the knowledge of the aid, knowledge of the target market, knowledge of the product, a clear understanding of a, pe a purpose of advertising. The ADA formula. The ADA, it stands attention, interest, desire, and action. So I will start explaining more about attention, the A of ADA. Okay, it must attract attention. That's what's sent for. So advertisers must use shocking statements. For example, as coronavirus. Interest must arouse interest. This is done by giving information about the product. For example, by supplying the facts and about the product. Create desire. You create a desire by focusing on the need for status or success. Move to attention. An advert should motivate an audience to take action by providing contact details or num uh, contact details or special offers. As I told you at the beginning of our lesson, we're going to do two modules. So now I'm going to go through module six, which is the meeting procedure. By the end of this module, you as learners, you need to know the qualities 
of the good chairperson. You need to know the qualities of a good secretary. You need to know the duties of a good secretary and the chairperson. You'll need to, to give a reason. Uh, why is it important for us to have meetings? Why meetings are important? The meeting procedure is a gathering of two or more people together discussing matters of a common interest. Make sure the decisions are made and carried out. And then we've got types of meeting. It's a public meeting and a private meeting. A public meeting, it can be for everyone. Uh, it, it's not limited. For example, if we have strike, you can have a public meeting. If there's anything, it is public meeting. Private meeting, it's only meeting who are invited to that meeting, who are allowed to attend that meeting. And then we've got general meetings. A uh, general meeting can be, can be attended by all members. It can be done weekly, annually, specially. We've got a committee meetings. A committee attended by the standard or a special committee. A management meeting is held every day. It is done every day to give what information to students or to staff. The qualities of a good chairperson. The qualities of a good chairperson. A, a, a chairperson is a person need to be. You need to be intelligent. You need. You need to be, have good uh, communication skills. You need to be a good listener. You need to be disciplined. You need. You need to be a strong leader. You need to have a pleasant personality. If you are a good chairperson. The duties of a, a good chairperson. The duties of a good chairperson is to ensure all members are notified about the meeting. Uh, confirm a previous minute and sign it. You need to ensure the meeting starts every day on time and end on time. You need to follow the agenda during the meeting. The qualities of a secretary. The qualities of a secretary, you need to have a good uh, language skills. You need to be disciplined. You need to be well organized. You need to be hardworking. The duties of a secretary before the meeting. It is your responsibility as a secretary to Make sure you prepare the place of the, or the venue of the meeting. You need to write a notice and agenda of the meeting. During the meeting, you need to send an attended register for signing. You need to write the minutes of the meeting. And also, you need to prepare, finalize of the previous meeting for signing at the meeting. After the meeting, your duty as a secretary, you need to remind people or members who have been delegated duties. You need to assist chairperson at all times. And also, it is your duty to make applications, for example, offer licensing. A control of the meeting. There are four control of the meeting. It is constitution, it is uh, acts and, state, and status of a country, it is a common law, and also it is custom and traditions. And then there are four things that makes a meeting legal. For you to be able to have a meeting legal, you need to have a quorum. A quorum is a number of people that are needed to be in the meeting. The meeting follows constitution. A chairperson is present or a vice chairperson. You need to notice all members according to the notice constitution. constitution. And then I will give you a few examples of the question that might help you as well. 
for your exams, or that might come up in your exam paper. They are there as follow. Name for, these are the exercises, name for um, meeting procedures to be properly constituted. List five qualities of good chairperson. In conclusion, in this lesson, in today's lesson, I've explained the duties of a secretary and duties of a chairperson, the, the qualities and of a chairperson and the qualities of a secretary. So it is very important for you to know them. I also explained the categories of mass media, the barriers of mass media, and the functions of mass media. And I also gave you, I also gave you the example of those functions. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed your lesson and good luck for your studies and please stay at home and be safe.